Hey kids, it's that time again, Friday night, time to do the Wadcast, I am one of your hosts, Josh, joined as always by that guy over there standing in the corner, hey you, yes, the other host, let's go, the other host, Brandon, I am just the other guy out of the two of us, yes, and it is a special show, it is a special show today because today I am going to try to keep everything as family friendly and uh, at the very most, maybe shoot for like a PG-13 rating instead of the normal NC-17 that always comes out of my mouth. Well, so far, so good. And we're almost so. a minute into it. You've already surpassed my <laughs> expectations. Oh, see, I'm that good. <laughs> but if we're going the PG-13 route, remember, one F-bomb allowed. So make it count. So I can keep one in the tank? You can keep one in the tank, but don't do what uh, the later day Die Hard movies did and and not even let it <laughs> let it go on the catchphrase. You, you gotta uh, yeah. you gotta make it count. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Before we get into our big old thing here, uh I'm gonna go ahead and remind everybody that you can follow me on Twitter at Skidcomic. Brandon doesn't do Twitter, but you know what? I might just make a Twitter account for him anyway, so you have some place to send your hate tweets. You know, there was an episode of South Park like that where they uh, made Stan a Facebook, and he didn't want it, and he got sucked into it. So uh, pass on the Twitter. I don't even really even like having a Facebook, to be honest with you. I, I don't like social media. But we'll get into that some other time off the show. I have my reason. But, um, but yes, I'll let you give them the Twitter handle, and then I will proceed with the instagram and then you and i together can try to simultaneously offer the facebook link okay uh well at skit comic is me directly you can always uh, follow the show at wadcast pod if you want to check out the website brandon oh yep and the uh I'm sorry, the Instagram is going to be Instagram at the Wadcast. So just type in the Wadcast, you'll find us. And then Facebook is just what is it, Josh? Facebook.com backslash the Wadcast. The Wadcast. It's a household name. So, so what are we getting into today, sir? A bunch of shenanigans for sure, but let let's not get right to business. I, you know, let's let's talk. How you been? I've been good, man. I've actually been really good. I um there actually has been some situations this week that have um very much unfortunately arisen. Uh not gonna get too into it, but long story short, I will say this. Um Stephen Joseph Sally the second or junior, um, as is more commonly used. Uh, A man that was pretty much like a father figure to me growing up. He definitely offered me a home away from home, him and his wife, uh, Terry, sadly. Uh, They had been in my life since I was in third grade, and he unfortunately passed away on um, Wednesday. What's today? Today's Friday. So Wednesday, uh, early morning, he passed away. So I've been trying to just stay busy and focus on writing since then. But um, Aside from that, just trying to get ready for the weekend so we can do this podcast and I can let off a little steam and just have fun and hang out with all of our internet friends. Well, I'm sorry to hear so. that someone so close to you had had passed on you. You know, I'm not a thoughts and prayers guy. Uh, I, 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 That's just not me. And of all people, you would know that I oh, would yeah. almost sound <laughs> condescending if I was like, I should do my thoughts and prayers. But no, I right do, with you. I, I do give you and, um, you know, their family my condolences, and I hope that you celebrate his life uh, as soon as possible. Oh no, absolutely! I've um, been thinking very fondly of all the times and all the encouragement he's offered me. Um, I will say that I, um, I've never really been one to not have um, any kind of. Uh, discouraging well at least not to a severe extent uh family members 
but there are times where he's made me question myself and on about like bad ways just if i was really up for what i was trying to do with my career and even with me saying um i think so he's he's been very encouraging towards it over the years so um but yeah so i mean uh, everyone in the uh, sadlies and the uh, every one of the sadlies and the lamonts in new jersey and pennsylvania and everywhere else uh guys i love you and as soon as this whole pandemic is over i almost use the f-bomb uh i didn't though um as soon as this whole thing is over i will be on the very first flight out to new jersey to see you guys and actually spend time with you uh cannot wait to see you guys and celebrate his life with you so um that's pretty much it love you guys and uh if you hope you guys are listening if not well <laughs> now the whole world knows how i feel about you so Aww. moving on though um so moving on from that, we actually have a really interesting show lined up today. And um, we were talking about a few things. One of the things that you and I had discussed throughout this week is the toxicity of, I guess, blind judgment towards other people trying to build a career along the same path as what these people are trying to build too. Or am I just, or am I jumping into things that uh, we weren't supposed to jump into yet? <laughs> Well, I things I wanted to talk about. Thanks for asking how I'm doing. Oh, I'm sorry, Josh. How are you? <laughs> you say you caught me off guard. Like, I mean, it's you knew how my week was. I, I spoke to you about it. So, <laughs> yes, but I am we did so. Go over the, we, we, okay, little little. I'm sorry. Little pull behind I'm sorry. the curtain here. Let, let's then let everybody I'm, have a peek. Go ahead. I gave everybody. Okay, fine. I gave Brandon the rundown, and I was like, ten minutes for plugs and banter. Here we I, are. You know what? Seven um, minutes listen, in. To quote Rob Schneider, okay, I suck again. So go <laughs> ahead and Josh, I'm sorry. Mr Mr. Chitty, how are you, sir? How was your week? Um it was fine. <laughs> no, no, no. You bastard. Um, I, I <laughs> ordered some things. I ordered some things online that I wanted to mention on the show. Okay. And it, I was going to use it to segue into uh, our first topic of conversation. So, uh, basically, when you are uh, an aspiring writer, or you know, even if you're an established writer, I, I wouldn't recommend stop doing this. Uh, one of the best things you can do is what? Watch stuff, right? Watch movies, watch TV. You start well, picking and, up and and read and read screenplays. That's a, that's a very important thing. Read screenplays. Read other people's works. Right. But I was going to say, doctors, remember that. Watch, 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 and you and you start kind of automatically picking up the beats. You know, find finding out the pacing, and yes, like you said, uh, the second part is reading other people's works. And I bought three things. Uh, that that haven't arrived yet, but uh, they're on the way. I bought three uh, published copies of different shooting scripts for three different movies. It would be kind of weird to get three copies of one, wouldn't it? It would be. So, yes, I will tell you what they were. So, the first... I, I was waiting for that. The first I bought was Juno by Diablo Cody. Okay. I thought, you know what? This is one. I mean, it's a freaking Oscar winner, right? So yeah. I had that going for it. It's also a movie that I really like. And it's also very dialogue driven. So I was like, you know, if you want to get an idea for what a dialogue driven script is, you know, that's that's not a bad place to go. The second one I got was Inception. Okay. I figured, you know what? Inception. That's got a lot of freaky stuff going on in it. So... I wonder what that looks like written... Is that is that weird? No, no. I mean, it's that there's a lot of times where you see a movie and you're just thinking, especially especially the ones that are so visually, um, I guess, um, 
they're so provocative, like you know, they're so just like aesthetically pleasing. They're looking at this style, and you're like, oh, I wonder how they you know, made this. Well, I wonder how they wrote this. Sometimes it's actually just so detailed in the script. Other times you're reading it, it might as well just be like, well, they just said something moves and <laughs> cool. <laughs> nowhere near as awesome as you would uh, expect but I actually have never read the Inception script um, but I look forward to it you know Christopher Nolan it's going to be an interesting read and another another really interesting film that I am absolutely in love with Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind Charlie Kaufman Yep, you and Daniel both that's her absolute favorite movie she loves that film more than she loves anything that's wrong that includes me and that definitely includes and that also means indiana jones i think her friends ashley and julia are like a close second and i'm like after them somewhere like i'm in that group but i'm very watered down but she loves that film absolutely goes crazy over it it's a great movie all the way through (laughs) I, it was one of those things where I didn't know what I was watching when I started watching it and just had my mind blown left and right. Like, ha 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 ha. This is great. Oh yeah. Well, it's such a, it, I mean, it's such a, I mean, it's a funny, but it's also just a really sad movie. Yeah. Really sad. And Elijah Wood is so weird. But with all that being said, you know, I'm, I'm surprised that you weren't, you know, at least dogging on my some of some of my picks a little bit, because I understand, you know, Diablo Cody has that whole thing about her past, and everyone's like, oh, she's an Oscar winner. Personally, I, I not really interested in what people used to do, but I think the thing to remember is there are people that will just completely and totally go on social media and wreck other people's work and their careers and do it with such malice that I I can't help but feel, I don't know, like I'm personally attacked by liking some, some things sometimes. Yeah, I know. I don't, I don't, argue with these people but they're out there and you and i both know and have seen this firsthand in in some of the the groups that we share on facebook yeah boom transition know, it, it's <laughs> um it's i mean it, it's it's one of those Okay, there, I'm not going to get into the name of the group because I don't want to make it sound like the group on Facebook is inherently bad. But there are douchebags in it. There are very, very pretentious people in this group. And it's dedicated towards, um, you know, aspiring writers and things of that nature. But while there are times where I read something and the question, I think one was, uh, what what I tell you about the, um, what is a montage? Yeah. Yeah, I like, remember that. Okay. I, I like okay, I get that maybe you don't know what the word montage is or whatever. Maybe there's like a language barrier because there's people from all over the world on this uh page. Um and that's I, I, I would hope to God, and I don't want to sound pretentious myself here, but I would hope to God that judging from how some of these people post things about their log lines or their uh synopses or anything like that, I would hope to God that these people have a language barrier with the English language. Because the way they're written, it's just, I think I actually read one to you, you know, verbatim earlier today. And uh, you oh, yeah. just, yeah. you asked me, to, you basically, you did everything but asked me to stop talking. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, had, but, I, had, um, I had to know how it went, but, but I did tell yeah. you that it hurt my brain just hearing the title. It's like... Yeah, I, I, just, I just imagine that when I was reading it to you, it was kind of like the same thing as watching... One of those, uh, like, you know, just uh, like say, like a reality TV show that you just cannot stand. But you watch enough of it to where now you want to know how it ends. And it's not on Netflix. It's not on Hulu. 
it's on TV. So now you have to watch the whole shit to find out how it ends. That's about how your reaction was to me over the phone. But that's how this, I this guy, with my he asked me with Big Brother. <laughs> but he 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 asked me. Well, he was asking everyone what a montage is, and as dumb of a question as I will personally say I felt that was because I did everything but roll my eyes when I read that. I responded in what I felt was the best way possible by providing him example, explaining what a montage is and providing him YouTube clips of where it was used. Everyone else on there, like, uh, they just tore the guy apart. I think uh, another post, someone asked a question. This guy came on and said, before you join a writing group on Facebook, learn to write yourself. And that guy that left that comment, I think, was asking um, what a log line is for a screenplay. I'm like, well, I mean, if, like, okay, well, log lines get confusing. But then he started, like, asking other questions in the same post about um, when do you transition out uh, or uh, when do you uh, end? How long does a first act of a feature length have to be? But this is a guy getting on another guy's ass saying that he should not be writing. Uh, be, he should learn how to write before he joins this group. It's just, it's toxic. It's really... It's really messed up. It, I, I wouldn't say it's online. Well, I guess it is kind of online bullying, but it's, you know, they're, they're all adults. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's no politics to fight over. It's just, I don't know, out of control, unsolicited egos, I guess. Best way to put it. Mm hmm. By people I mean, that have like, no, no standing uh, or experience. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Perfect way to put it. They are dogging other people that are trying to make a name for themselves. And you know what? Everybody has to start somewhere. Oh, yeah. And the best way Absolutely. to learn something I mean... is to ask a question. And the whole group was put together so people could get together and ask each other questions, right? Yeah. And, and most of the posts are actually very supportive. And I like seeing that. I mean, it's like it's... And again, everyone listening, the reason why we initially started this show is not for my vulgarity or anything like that, or me and Josh trying to be like one of those, you know, late night radio shows where they're just dogging each other the entire time. We're it was mainly jocks. to reach out and show. <laughs> the whole thing was put together to not be like Opie and Anthony in New Jersey or whatever. I forget the other ones were in, I think, Bubba the Love Sponge, the old one in uh, Florida. But it's... yeah, yeah. It was put together to reach out to people and actually let you guys know that, like, if you're trying to do something, just, you know, do it. You know, network, get out there, and what have you. So, uh, but either way, I don't know, it just really irked me this week. And I think, um, I think it probably bothered me more than um, it even, I wouldn't say it didn't bother you, but I was, it really pissed me off when I saw this stuff. Just poor guy's asking, yeah, he's asking a dumb question. Yeah, you can take a few seconds to Google the answer, but... Uh, I don't know why he didn't think of doing that. Yeah. Well, he also has to wonder like how many of these people are actually serious about writing, but then I've seen him enter uh, short scripts onto the Facebook page. And so I know he's serious. He's just self-taught through and through like everything he's doing. Like I think he's writing on um, like a, his uh, notepad program on his phone because he doesn't have access to anything else. And I think he actually asked a question prior that he deleted because he just was getting uh, hit with so much sarcasm. He asked what kind of program, if there's a free program he can use to uh, write a script or what's the best way to write a script. And one guy wrote in a typewriter. Keep using Microsoft Word. Go to the textbook on your uh, Microsoft thing, like whatever. I mean, real writers can afford Apple. Like, I'm... <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought I'm like, bullshit. <laughs> And real real writers like most art artists are uh you know, a little strapped for cash. It's the it's not even the exceptional writers that are making money, it's it's the working writers, the the staffers, the the guys that are selling their scripts, the ones that are in. They're the ones that can afford Apple. The 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 regular writers, the good writers. 
that of which there are so many, you know, a lot of us still have regular day jobs. Yep. That that doesn't take away from our talent or skill. It just means we haven't pushed into being full time industry workers. I guess oh, yeah. that's how you would put it. No, absolutely. I mean, I, I, my day job is working in uh, rehabilitative uh, healthcare. I mean, it's that's my day job. But I'll tell you right now, if I want to write something, if there's an idea, if there's an idea I have, and I just get done with a patient, or if I'm working with a patient, I try to keep it in my head. If I have access to like a paper nearby, because I keep my assignment book in my you know pocket of my scrubs. If I have an idea, I write the idea down. There's no wrong way to write something. There's proper formatting, of course, of the screenplay. But writers just write. That's how it should be. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, it doesn't matter if, like, where you are. I mean, I think I've been in the bar one night just... <laughs> I think the night that I was with you in Florida that we talked about in our uh, first episode where, you know, we were getting three sheets of the wind. And I think I asked for a few bar napkins and I wrote a few things down on those and woke up the next morning with, like, 50 bar napkins in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't understand a single thing I wrote down, but I remember I tried to write something. That but, was a good night, man. Let's not talk it really about was. it ever again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I got something you. that something that does irritate me, and it irritates me to no end. When people that are in a group of writers, mind you, can't come up with something better. Okay, for instance. Someone said something, uh, Tales from the Loop, was the worst television show ever. My mind instantly flashed back to Comic Book Guy, where it was just a super hyperbolic, worst TV show ever. And the next place my mind goes is, you're... You're supposed to be a writer. That that was your beginning, middle, and end statement on this show. It's just that, that it was the worst ever. No reason why. Nothing listed why in the actual text. Just a huge old hyperbolic shot. And... A show that actually a lot of people seem to like. So, why would you say something is the... Mind you, it's it's just incredibly subjective to begin with. Yeah. But to factually state worst ever, this is it. Where, where does someone get off yeah, it like might... that? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'll, I have my opinion. I have very strong opinions of some movies. I don't like, I mean, I have some to watch that show at all. And um, I've seen the same guy talking about other things, but he talks about, you know, just mainstream everything. And I think I try to bring up, um, I try to bring up uh, Relish. Uh, because I like, if I recommend, I don't just recommend it on the show, because this is like only this past week, week and a half that I saw this. So I don't just yeah. uh, recommend that for the sake of recommending it to impress people. I don't. I, I could give a shit about re- impressing anyone. I just thoroughly I, that movie just very much resonated with me, and I greatly respect what uh, Justin Ward had done with um, what he had to work with to make that happen. Um, oh, I so I it. recommended it to him. Yeah, I, I mean, I recommended it to him, and I, I think he looked it up and he fired back with the most homophobic remark. And I'm like, okay, well. Not oh, I gotta know what this like, is. You know, I gotta know what this uh, is. Well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Like, I, I, you know, I'm not gonna use it on on here. But it's just like, he, he, the things he said. Like, I mean, I have too much respect for the, uh, you know, for, you know, uh, Tyler. Uh, oh, God, I feel so bad if I'm mispronouncing this. Uh, Tyler uh, Dickiara. I feel so bad if I mispronounce that. But at the same time, I have too much respect for what he did in that film, as like you know, with how the character was portrayed in the film. It was phenomenal acting. 
So it's just like there's no way in hell I would repeat that in case for any reason Tyler might end up hearing this at some point because it's just I, I don't get behind that. <clears throat> um, obviously, with our guest, I guess last week, we had dove, we dove into a few things I didn't expect to with him and his personal life, but you know, obviously he's gay, and so I have like I knew him my entire life. I'm not going to get anything that would be a disrespectful slur towards that community. <clears throat> but I think I asked him, like, you know, just you should give it a chance. If you want to be a writer, you should actually learn how to write what you can afford to shoot. And I think the idea that he was pitching was his big space drama thing that would, as he put it, would rival Star Wars. I didn't shoot it down. <laughs> I let somebody else do that for me. Because, I mean, again, Battlefield Earth was the same thing. It was supposed to rival. It was supposed to be like the next Star Wars. And we all know the sad end of that story. But um, it was, it's, it's horrible. It's Have your own subjective view on things, and that's fine. And, you know, do it as a joke once in a while. Like, oh, yeah, Betty White's a sub-demon from the uh, nether realm and uh, change my mind. <laughs> you know, just sit. <laughs> well, those are facts. I know she's... <laughs> oh, God, she passes away. I'm actually going to be very devastated because I really do love that woman. But um, secret's out. I actually do greatly admire Betty White. But the, uh, the thing is, is that it would be like one of those um, Stephen Crowder things from Louder with Crowder where... I would say something and change my mind, but I'd say it'd be a meme. It'd be a joke. This guy was dead serious with that post about like, oh, change my mind. Like, well, no, I'm not going to change your mind. You're allowed to have your own. I think I told him he's allowed to have his own opinion. But, um, you know, his opinion is about as uh, valid as mine, which is not very valid because it's my opinion. I mean, for Christ's sake, I like Count Chocula mixed with Bud Light. It's delicious. Changed my mind. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I, I think, I think we need to talk, Brandon. It's been years since I've done it. But I'll tell you right now, you get chocolate beer. I'm not okay. We're not here to talk about like you know, the dynamics of Count Chocolate's deliciousness mixed with those, you know, beautiful marshmallows drowned in you know Bud Light to where you get that delicious chocolate beer at the bottom that is a me thing and um, I will say if you don't try it you're missing out but this is not Martha Stewart nor is it Rachel Ray so let's stick with the film thing it's not about me it's not about me it's about us discussing our love for independent artists of all levels of filmmaking in any department so Let's move on. What's next? <laughs> that 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 was it. That was the whole show. I got nothing, man. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, a large part of the show of I'm sorry, my post about the show is me trying to keep a clean mouth, which so far I have done. I've let so far I so let a few. We're, we're halfway I, there. I have, yeah, I have let a few words that are very much admissible and permitted into the PG-13 um, rating system. The F-bomb has yet to come out. Uh, I really wish we had like an applause uh, sound effect to put behind that because I feel like I could actually bow right now and accept my accolades. But um, We do. Oh, well, you didn't play it, did you? Right now. <laughs> But, say um, thank you, accept your award, and get off the stage. Thank you. Thank you for this award. Thank you so much. Uh, exit left? Okay. Yes. I'll go that yes. way. Okay. I'm back. Let's get on with it. So so what else is is there to talk about as far as this goes? Uh, we, we didn't really talk about how, and it, it is listed in the in the preview, the people that aren't anywhere bad mouthing the people that are somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. So do you think Those that's are the just people a straight that people up network with? Do do you think that's just like a straight up jealousy move or what? I think I think honestly with the people that bad mouth those who have actually gone somewhere, they have their opinions and they feel that they're right. And you can have your opinions, and that's fine. 
It is when those opinions are being rammed down. Now, if it's like a stone cold fact about somebody, tell me why it's a fact. If it's a fact, I'll listen, whatever, and I'll gauge on whether you're full of full of caca or not. See, I don't know if I'm gonna replace the S word with working on it. Um, but yeah, I think honestly, there's a severe level of jealousy and maybe even a uh, larger level of, I guess, uh, self depreciation going on there. I mean, you can't say someone sucks at what they do if you can't do it yourself. Now, I can I say know. that Tommy was so. But I will say that Tommy Wiseau absolutely sucks as a uh, director. But that's because of the fact that he wanted to, you know, he he had full control and full reign of everything, and he was very much documented to be a horrible person to work around on set. And it wasn't just one person. It wasn't just uh, Greg uh, Sinestro, I think his name is the uh, his best friend. It was the entire like yeah. the cast and crew, everyone, so that he was a nightmare to deal with between his script that was poorly written, completely incomprehensible dialogue, telling everyone to stick to the dialogue. I mean, there's a scene in that movie where the mom talks about how she has cancer, and that's the only time you hear about it the entire film. Like, I thought, finally, this movie is going to have a plot. Nope. It's definitely cancer. Oh, you'll be all right, Mom. Like, that's a, that's a, cold, that's a cold response from the daughter, man. <laughs> but... I say he's a horrible filmmaker because I know for a fact that if I had the resources that he had, which was all of his own money, I could turn out something that was a lot less melodramatic than a film. And instead of accepting it for what it was and learning from your mistakes, he went on and just paraded the film for the next, what, like almost 20 years now? Yep. And passed it off as a comedy. There's nothing funny about the film aside from how horrible it is. <laughs> you're you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Honestly, it looks like the very first film I ever did because of how melodramatic it is. And that first film was back in my freshman year of college um, that I made very last minute from 48 hours to start to finish. I wrote, wrote directed, filmed, acted, and edited my entire film thanks to the help of I think four classmates total. Well, three classmates and one upperclassman. It was dramatic as shit. But, you know. <laughs> the dialogue was also pretty rough, too. So, I'm not perfect, but my God. Okay. Well, I guess, uh, I guess that covers... The haters on Facebook, I, I only have to add this. If if you are going to criticize someone else's work, I'm not saying you need to have your own resume ready to drop in front of everybody because gatekeeping and things like that when it comes to who's a good critic and who's not, that, that's completely irrelevant. Everybody's allowed to have their own opinions. The only thing that I ask... Personally, this is me asking you, everybody out there, as a personal favor, if you're going to say something, at least have an argument. We are in the middle of one of the craziest periods in modern history, especially when it comes to everyone out there giving their opinions and passing it off as just fact or their theories and, and crazy, crazy notions and saying this is fact. And when asked to back that up, they got nothing. No arguments, no, <clears throat> no details, nothing to explain why this is how they feel. So, if you are going to give an opinion... At least be ready to back that up with why you feel a certain way about something. I don't I don't think it's too much to ask. And quite frankly, if you're in a a social media group whose purpose is to introduce you 
to fellow artists, fellow writers, directors, actors, producers, because, you know, all of those in the above uh, uh, are represented in social media yep. because guess what? All of those jobs have Facebook pages too. And they want to go out there and meet people too. And they want to find the next big whatever. They want to find the next great, you know, who's it. And I can tell you for almost certainty that somebody that's just going to log on to a networking site or a networking group and just bash someone else's work without uh, any kind of solid or even flimsy argument in certain cases, without any kind of argument whatsoever, uh, whatsoever. you're going to be frowned upon. And that is going to be a heavy turnoff for any, from, from anybody wanting to work with you in the future. I'm not saying you're going to wind oh, yeah. up on a list somewhere, but you know if they remember your name for not flattering reasons, and next thing you know, your script is being rejected, or your film submission to a festival is rejected, don't be surprised if, if it's because you were just a complete douchebag. For no reason. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And more importantly is if the word networking is in the name of a group that you joined, just yeah. network. Like network, talk to people, rub elbows. It's like an online mixer of people, and you never know who is there. I think I said it on the show before, that Night Rider was started simply because David Hasselhoff had a conversation with a rando on a plane about a talking car. Boom. Night Rider. You never know who you're talking to. And there are some very successful screenwriters in the, you know, on Facebook in these groups that see you. And they, you could build a rapport. And some of these screenwriters need writing partners. They need ghostwriters. You could get an in if you have something worth showing. Some yep. of these professional screenwriters who I think one of them actually works for Marvel Studios. Um, I think he offers his services to Dr. Scripps. And some guy was talking, like, talking down to him. I'm just sitting back. I think I posted up the gift popcorn of someone, uh, the gift um, of someone eating popcorn. Because I <laughs> wanted to see where it would go. <laughs> and me and this guy, we actually had a really good conversation. Like, me and this professional writer... Who it, it's where I want to be had a fantastic conversation. I think on um, on the phone we we were talking for like a good what twenty minutes about just like different things. As I asked him to check out one of my scripts. So I mean, it's you never know who you're talking to, and the rough part about professional screenwriters is that a lot of times they're names and not faces. You don't know who they are. And even the worst part is you have to pay attention to who the names are attached to these opening and closing credits of these films mm -hmm. to even know you, who you might be talking to. These guys are pretty much like the shadows of the industry, best way to put it. All the behind-the-scenes people, you never know who they are. They could be your in. Why be, a, you know, why be a dick to them? I don't get it. And I will say, if you start questioning somebody's credentials and their immediate response is, Hey man, I was just trying to help. I really don't feel like I need to list my resume here. Uh, that could be a good sign no, that you've done messed up. <laughs> yeah, no, I've gotten that before. Cause, uh, generally, um, from what I've seen, the more successful the person is, the less likely they are, to try to justify themselves to anybody. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at Mark, our first, uh, well, I guess, rough guest, our interviewee um, yeah. <laughs> for the show. Again, he's an Emmy Award winning, and granted, it's a post-audio engineer. But Still he's been doing it for years. Emmy. He's worked, he's, he, yeah, and, but I mean, he's worked in the industry for years, and if he's won an award for his hard work, it means that he knows what the hell he's talking about. 
I think some guy asked him one time, oh, I looked you up on Facebook and uh, I didn't see anything. I'm like, yeah, looks okay. I, mustn't, you know, I think he said something like, you must not be looking at the right profile. <laughs> or uh, no, he looked him up on IMDb. And I think Mark fired back because, you know, Mark, you know, I love the guy first off. I'm going to say that I love Mark. Um, he, he may not look as, um, I'm trying to think the best way to put it without sounding like, rude about it but he may not look like he's going to back himself up if you look at his profile like i mean it's a, he, he he looks like the sweetest guy and he is the sweetest guy but he will rain down hellfire in a heartbeat if you cross him and he just let this guy have it and um, I think the guy was asking what his experience was, and um, he doesn't boast about his Emmy. That's the thing. That, that's another thing I like. He's not a pretentious person. He's not full of himself. He's extremely down to earth. We boasted about. But it, I'm looking. Uh, I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, man, dude. I'm not saying Mark is going to go introduce you to like a big name showrunner or anything like that, but he might be able to guide you in the right direction if you, you know come off like a little bit more than just a tool but either way so i mean <clears throat> we've been on this subject for like a hot minute now um yeah long story short be cool yeah yeah and one day when i'm when i'm either accepting my oscar or my razzie i will look back and i will remember you and you will never partake in my oscar nor my razzie Maybe I'll win both for the same thing. That'd be awesome. I think that might be a first. <laughs> Career goals. <laughs> Let's see. Who was it? was it? Was it Halle Berry that won both in the same weekend? For Catwoman. And she gracious. Uh, yeah, I think Catwoman. I forget the other one. But she she actually showed at she the showed both. and gave, uh, Yeah, she showed up for both in the same weekend. And she accepted, graciously accepted her Razzie for Catwoman. I mean, <laughs> she had an acceptance speech and everything. <laughs> How awesome is that? I mean, my God. And you know what? I'm going to cut that segment a little early. We can jump back to this. But I'm going to cut that segment right now. An actress that I would love to meet is Halle Berry. Just okay. for that reason that we that you just reminded me of. Okay. So... Ah, oh, man. Okay. Now, we'll, we'll get back to the whole writer, actor, director that we want to work with eventually. But, um, sorry, I'm just trying to pull up the program for tonight because I. Well, it is actually about that time. Oh, wow. It is already 745, isn't it? Okay. Wow. Um, one second here. Do, 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 do. Pulling it up now. Bear with me. Bearing with you. Okay, so. Okay. Are we doing the uh, the cold read right now, or are we? Well, actually, no. You know, we didn't discuss the films that made us want to get into the industry. We didn't really. Oh yeah, uh, that was bring that up, too. and we also. <laughs> oh, I've, I've, uh, I'm sorry. I had to open this up. The, the, this conversation about talking down about people is just like it's lasted longer than i thought it would because it really i'm sorry it really pissed me off so um, okay so either way uh so joshua chitty what hey don't don't use what films name, or film oh my god here we go here. <laughs> what films or film made you want to get into the industry the film industry or television industry well uh, i'm gonna tell you right now first of all the obvious answer for a lot of people clerks is not mine because clerks uh believe it or not is the film that made me feel like i could break into the industry uh, oh yeah well i mean that was also the 90s when something like that would actually win awards i love kevin smith but if you were to put that out there today i don't think it would go as far as it did back in the mid 90s no at, at best it would probably be like a, a hulu miniseries well and, probably amazon prime would be for free yeah, yeah, that too. But and I also think it would be amazing. To come to think of it, yeah, eight but episodes okay, go ahead. of Clerks. Anyway, anyway, 
So growing up, I watched a lot of a lot of movies and watched a lot of TV shows, and I still do. In fact, at my day job, I'm told I watch way too much, and I have to explain. You know, that's that's pretty much my second job. That's what I have to do to get to where I want to be. And when it comes to what made me want to be there in the first place. I think the first movie that made me want to be in the industry, and I will say as an actor, is The Goonies. Okay. I thought, as a kid... And why is that? Wouldn't it be great to get paid to go on these kinds of adventures? Not knowing, of course, that it involved like 20-hour days. (laughs) You know, setting up shots, and it's not just one continuous, you know... (laughs) You get chased around with the camera and get your your adventures filmed. Wasn't okay. really aware of what what was uh, involved in filmmaking when I was a little kid. Because I really I really did think it was these kids, you know, or yeah, they they had lines to do and whatnot. But I thought of it more like a play where they were just followed around with cameras. Okay. <clears throat> so that was my first. I think as a writer, what made what me that? want... I'd say as a writer, the the movie that made me want to break into the business as a writer was probably... You know what? That That's a much harder question to answer. I, I might have to go with Office Space. Okay. Just some of the characters were just so weird. Real? I was like, yeah, yeah, weird. And, you know, some of them were real, some of them were weird. And the way they kind of coexisted on on the same plane. What's his face? From um, Diedrich Bader. You know, the, the neighbor. He also voiced Batman. And uh, what was the Brave and the Bold? Oh, I, I, I can't remember his name. Uh, he was also on the Drew Carey Show, another show that made me want to become a writer because there was something inherently amazing to me about people that could create conversation by themselves. That that someone that could get into the minds of so many different people and put them on a page. But of course, again, this was before I realized that a lot of the time there's a team involved with writing. Yeah. So really, that's it for me. Goonies, Office Space, and the Drew Carey Show are the ones that made me sit up and notice and say, that's what I want to do. Okay. Okay. How about you? Um, I would have to say, <clears throat> as far as actually, um, see, mind you, I didn't know what exactly I wanted to do. Like at first, I thought I wanted to be a cartoonist or a graphic novelist or something like that, or like be a showrunner for a cartoon uh, for my series, uh, Nine to Five Workaholics, that I was publishing back in, uh, I think, high school. But um, <clears throat> that's what I thought I wanted to do. Um, it wasn't until I decided to get the hell away from New Jersey that I came out here for uh, film school that I started really paying attention to everything. Uh, so honestly, Clerks 2, of all things, was what made me want to get into writing. Because honestly, Clerks 2 is brilliant on so many levels. I mean, it's I think to this day, it's a close, it's a close uh, tie between Clerks 2 and Dogma that I think are of uh, Kevin Smith's best films. Now, that being said, that's what made me want to get into writing because I loved the dialogue. I loved how I loved how raw it was, how hysterical it was, and how at times it was actually very heartbreaking. Um, as far as actually directing, I would have to say um, Grumpy Old Men with Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon. Like, I went back and I revisited that while I was in college. I'm like, this is actually... Also, like Clerks, it's actually very heartfelt. 
And it's hysterical. I mean, like, who the hell? I mean, it, who harbors a grudge that big over a squabble over a girl from childhood into damn close to senility? It, it, was, it was just, I thought it was perfect. So um, that's the one that got me into one to direct. Um, close seconds were pretty much anything Harold Ramis, just because the writing and directing in his films are great. You know, as good as it gets, a Groundhog Day. Um, you know, Stripes, all those films. Um, but yeah, so those are mine. But real quick, before we get into the new thing, um, I'm going to offer everyone my recommendation of the week. And it's not going to be one. And it's not going to be, well, it's going to be one indie feature film. But it's going to be uh, two shorts that I actually really like. I'm, I'm going to post all, I'm going to post these uh, shorts on our webpage. And I hope you got the uh, <laughs> directors are okay with this. Um, but there's one called The Gunfighter that I just introduced to uh, Josh today. You did, absolutely. Yes. His, it's absolutely hysterical. Nick Offerman is a, um, he's a narrator, and he pretty much narrates an entire standoff between a lone gunman and a bunch of heavily armed um, townsfolk in, you know, the Old West in a, in a tavern. Uh, it's absolutely hysterical. I recommend anyone watch it. I'm going to post. I'm going to share it on the Wadcast uh, Facebook page. Um, after that, there's another short film called uh, The Stutterer, or just Stutterer, and it's about a guy who has a, debil a debilitating stutter. He cannot get a single sentence out without stuttering at great lengths, trying to get just a few words out. Uh, but the narration is through his inner monologue as he gets ready for a date with a woman who is deaf. And you see her perspective too. And it's actually really, it's really sad, but it's also really sweet. I, I really do like where they, where they went with that film. Um, that too will be posted on the Wildcast page. <clears throat> as far as a feature length indie film, I don't want to say it's not artistic because every independent film is some level of art. And these guys are the prime example of making something from nothing and not living anywhere close to Los Angeles to do it. These guys filmed this movie in, I think, uh, Pennsylvania, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, I can't remember. I'll talk to my buddy Joel about that one. But it's called Bigfoot the Movie. And if you have Amazon Prime, you can see it. Um, I'll post a link to it on the uh, Wildcast page. It's a comedy. It's about it's about like three rednecks trying to hunt down Bigfoot after they kill his friend, and um, it's it's really kind of like um, a low budget Shaun of the Dead with Bigfoot instead of zombies. A um, bunch of one liners. There's some really hysterical things that happen in the film. I I think it's I think it's funny, <clears throat> but uh, those are my recommendations. I don't have any reading material to recommend unless, yeah, I don't. But um. We do have a new game that we're playing uh, tonight, Josh. Yes, Would you like do. to uh, explain what we're about to do? I hope you have not read what I sent you yet. I have not, because that would defeat the okay. purpose. Okay, so Josh, would you like to explain to everyone what the game is that we're about to play? Okay, basically it's like this. <clears throat> it's called uh, Cold Reads. And one of us writes a script, and we will perform it together here for the first time. The only thing is, the other person has not seen the script at all, and will be doing it extremely cold. So, uh, I'm not sure what Brandon's motivations are with what he wrote, but we will find out very soon. Did I need to add anything else? Did we lose Brandon? I think we might have lost Brandon for a second. Yes, yes we did. I'm going to tell him to leave the call and re-enter. Sorry folks. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. I'm sorry, guys. I, I um we had a little technical difficulty. We're on 
polar opposite sides of the United States, and I couldn't hear anything for a good like minute or so. Just so, Josh, uh, you explained everything to them? Yeah, basically I said um, one person writes something, the other one's mm-hmm. unaware of what it is. We read together at the same time. It's a cold read, and I don't know what your intentions are. So, Oh, I'm going to direct you. As okay. you're saying stuff, I will direct you. Now, is there uh, is is there dialogue here, or is it how many characters? Oh, is it the, uh, no, there, there. It's just, it's just two characters. <clears throat> I play one, you play one. But <clears throat> I will also, well, technically three characters because there's a new news broadcast at the end. So I need you to play the news anchor. <clears throat> okay. Because I won't do it. <clears throat> God damn. Excuse me. Um. So. Do you uh, do you have it up? I have not opened it yet. I was waiting for you to give me the word. Go ahead and open it up. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the cold ring. Oh, uh, yeah, cold ring. <laughs> cold read for a short script. It is uh, six pages in length. And I wrote this in about 15 minutes last night because we had nothing to really play this game with at the time. So aside from things that we are not going to be really sharing with the public because we're working on them. But... um. Okay, so I will play Jack. Okay, Josh? Okay. You will play the masked man. The masked man? The masked man, yes. Okay, I'm on the title page right now. Okay, scroll down to the first page. All right. Exterior building day. Right. And uh, the masked man is also the man's voice, so I'm going to need you to... uh, you know, do that. So I will, I'll, I'll actually, um, I will conduct the narration. Well, no, I'm going to need you to direct the, uh, conduct the narration. I'll let you do that part. Okay. I will just read Jack. So whenever you're ready, ladies and gentlemen, this is called The Trade Off, written by yours truly. Exterior building day. Jack, 30s, a business professional, is leaning against the wall of a building. He sucks on a cigarette, leans his head back and exhales a cloud of smoke. Jack checks his watch, takes another puff from his cigarette, closes his eyes, and rests the back of his head against the building before exhaling. The man's voice off screen. That's a nice watch. Jack looks to his side to to see a masked man aiming a gun at him. Hand it over. Oh, come on, man. Didn't you mug me last week? That was Georgie. He called off today. Oh. I uh I didn't know criminals had sick days. Just give me your watch. Jack takes off his watch and hands it to the masked man. The masked man looks at the watch for a minute and cocks his hammer. Oh, what? You told me to give it to you. This is a strawberry shortcake watch. Yeah, I know. I found it on the street earlier. G- give me your wallet. If I had money, do you think I'd be wearing a watch that I found on the street? The masked man looks at the watch again. This thing isn't even working. Huh? I guess what you get I get I guess you get what you pay for, huh? Uh, your jacket looks expensive. Give it to me. No. No? I'm aiming a gun at you. And that's a nice gun. Give it to me. I'm not going to give you my gun. Why not? Because I'm using it to rob you. Okay, okay, okay. I have an idea. You listening? There's something wrong with you, isn't there? (laughs) So many things, it's ridiculous. Uh, But about my idea, you give me the gun, and I'll give you a cigarette. Yeah, why would I do that? Because the, the gun's a fake. No, it's not. It says made in Taiwan on the side of the barrel. I had it shipped from Taiwan, so what? It looks really fake. It's not fake. I'm just saying. You give me the toy gun, and I'll give you two cigarettes. A moment of silence passes. All right. And I'll let you keep my strawberry shortcake sidewalk watch. I can't rob people with a cigarette. And why not? What, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Threaten to burn someone? Oh, okay, first off, could you stop aiming the toy gun at me? 
You've already established that you're a fraud. It's real, but I'm going to lower it anyway. Okay. All right. This is where I'm going to direct you. <clears throat> you say it's real, but I'm going to lower it anyway. But you have to kind of sound like you know that you're full of it. And you know that the person you're trying to rob knows you're full of it. But you're trying to pass it off like you're not full of it. So kind of like, oh, it's real, but I'm going to lower it anyway. Just, you know, that, the whole like decline of, you know, confidence needs to be there. So action. All right. All right. Good note. <clears throat> <laughs> it's real but I'm gonna lower it anyway thank you it's heavy and, and uh, my arm's tired alright listen man I'm just saying that gun won't scare anyone but if you threaten them with a cigarette you look crazy just think about it okay hear me out who the hell runs around threatening to burn someone with a cigarette if they don't hand over the cash uh, no one no one You'd be a pioneer, okay? If you had a cigarette on you right now, threatening to burn me, I'd be more inclined to give you my jacket. Yeah? <laughs> Straight up, man. <laughs> Getting burned sucks. Why would I risk you burning me? You, you kind of have a point. You, you're missing one thing. Yeah? What's that? My gun's not fake. Uh, it's totally fake. Maybe... I wrote Made in Taiwan to throw you off. Oh, it's got a red tip on the barrel. I painted that too. Yeah. Did you also put water inside of it? What? Your barrel is like... The two men stare at one another for a lengthy moment. Two cigarettes? That's right, two cigarettes. And I get to keep the watch. It's all yours. Make it four and you have a deal. Four? Four of my smokes. That's that's a, that's a little steep. Jack takes a hit off his cigarette. The man squirts water on it, extinguishing the tip. Four. What if I say no? I'll follow you around and squirt every cigarette you try to light up. That's just mildly inconvenient. I mean, what if someone sees you holding a gun on me? I'm just a concerned citizen doing my part to keep the air clean for us non-smokers. Oh. Huh. You, uh, said four cigarettes? That's right. And I'm keeping the watch. Oh. Jack... Jack lets out a sigh as he pulls four cigarettes from his pack and hands them to the masked man. The masked man hands his gun to Jack. And the lighter. That wasn't part of the deal. Damn it. They stare at one another for another lengthy moment before the masked man turns and runs away. Jack empties the water from the gun and shoves it in his jacket pocket. Interior, Jack's apartment, night. Jack is relaxing on his couch, flipping through the channels when a news report catches his attention. That's right, you heard it here first on Channel 5. A masked man was shot and killed today when he threatened to rob an undercover police officer with a lit cigarette. Jack turns off the television and lights up a cigarette as we fade to black. The end. <laughs> okay. Not bad for a 15 minute script, huh? <laughs> not bad, not bad at all. <laughs> that was Cold Reads, starring Brandon and Josh. Uh, next time we do and this, that's... I will be writing, and uh, Brandon will have to uh, do a bit more of the old acting. Oh, man. Well, I'm just impressed I only had to direct you really one time. I've worked with better, but not many. <laughs> <laughs> all right but yes as josh said that was our cold read i don't know if we're gonna make it a weekly thing yet we're just still kind of trying it out uh but it's definitely something that that was fun that was actually a lot of fun it was i enjoyed that so and it's fun in the way that things that are not fun are fun like we're just reading but you know what 
it was fun to read it. We can't make a film right now, but we can do an old school radio show, radio show. Next time, I think we need to do some like sound effects in the background to really bring back the old days of uh, radio. Yeah, I don't know if I can do all the twists and turns on the knobs and be, you know, like a, a, a Foley artist. So we'll we'll have to Listen, figure out how that works. Yeah, well, like, you know, we have like wood to knock on. We have all kinds of stuff. I have a dog to uh, pat his stomach for certain things. So we're good. But uh, and he, 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 you know, he'll get off on it anyway. So he's kind of like a done deal with that one. And you know what? But, uh, is there... oh, just what's up? brainstorming out loud. Maybe at some point we figure out a way for... Uh, some of our aspiring writers to uh, pitch in if they want us to do a cold read and then neither one of us would have a clue. That Uh, is actually a very good idea. That's a a fantastic idea. I love that. Um, So we, I will actually, I'll post that on uh, Facebook tonight. And if you want to post on Twitter, also do the same thing with um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, With uh, Instagram. Well, you you do the Instagram. That's fine. We will look for people to, come up with their own short scripts. It's got to be two characters, something that's simple for you and me to really do. Mm -hmm. And that way we can actually have something go on. And maybe, I think I mentioned this earlier, if we have a special guest who's down for it, we can actually have our special guest get involved in it. So I think that would have been a lot of fun with, um, you know, with, you know, Ernest last week, that would have been a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, I think that's actually a good idea. I like that. Cool, cool, cool. And, while we're talking about our social media accounts, remember you can always follow me on Twitter at Skit Comic, and you can follow the show on Twitter at Wadcast Pod. But if you are a fan of the you know company behind uh, the curtain, I guess you could say uh, Simicore Studios. That's that's where I do all of my podcasting at. So if you like my voice. And feel free to follow Simicore Studios on Twitter or go to simicorestudios.com. Or what's that website? Spreaker. Now, I was, I was thinking more along the lines of the Wadcast website. Oh, oh, oh. I, I thought we were still talking about the podcast. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Thewadcast.com. You have to like really prepare me for this, man. Just throw me under the bus like that guy. But okay, so, um, yeah, thewadcast.com. Uh, if you go on the homepage, Whenever we, you know, whenever we have a live show, there's a box on the homepage now that thank, thank you, Josh, for setting that. Uh, that you can actually go and just click the play button when it comes to 10 p.m. Eastern time or 7 p.m. you know uh, Pacific time. You can just click the uh, play button, and then you can hear our beautiful sultry voices that are as smooth as melted butter. Um, and if you can make your way over to Instagram, you can find me on Instagram under uh, bjaxman82. B, as in Brandon, J-A-X, man, 8-2 on Instagram. And you can also follow the Wadcast at, um, you know, the Wadcast. And if you are not, Facebook. if you are not listening to this live, by the way, if you are one of the many people that download and listen at your own leisure, don't forget to hit subscribe don't forget to hit like, and don't forget to leave a review and to let us know what you think about the Wadcast or any other fine podcast you listen to. Because when it comes to podcasting, that is currency. So when you leave a review, whether it's one, two, three, four, or five, I guess it goes up to five stars. Leave a five star. Yeah, we are only as successful as you guys uh, make us. So uh, that's pretty much uh, all I've got. Um, and but I will say this. I had the opportunity to insert an F bomb and it will still remain PG 13, but I am not going to do it. That's fine. Uh, what do we have going on next week? Next week, we will have a special guest. Just making sure it's going to be uh, confirmed. He says he's down for it, but I don't want to throw his name out there until I can actually, let me see some real quick. One second. I'm sorry, guys. And just in case we can't confirm this on the air immediately, here we go. You can keep an eye uh, on all of those social media accounts that were just mentioned. Oh, okay. He is uh, he's good for next Friday. So next Friday, we will have um, you know he was actually my assistant director on um, the Bad Agent short that we did last year. Uh, the first thing that we did as a collective group for the Film Reach uh, group. Um, 
His name is Eddie Vigil Jr., uh, a very talented man. He just came, he just uh, finished, um, this past year, he wrapped his very first feature that he pretty much produced and made happen from the ground up. Um, of course, he obviously m probably had help. I don't really know the dynamics behind it, but he's um, up and, you know, he's definitely making his way up the ladder. Uh, he's very talented. He was a fantastic assistant director. Um, yeah, he's a great guy all around. So uh, we're going to have him next week, um, preferably as a special guest. I've got to work those uh, details out. But uh, either way, I'm looking forward to having him on our show, and I will still try to remain a little toned back from now on because I really want us to actually be, I don't know, a little, I, I think the swearing has, it needs to tone down. I, I never realized how bad my mouth was until I heard myself on the show. It's pretty bad. I'm surprised so, we didn't know. By the way, if you are interested in seeing well, Bad Agent, I did post a link to the Amazon uh, listing on the Wadcast Twitter page. So make sure you're following that so you can get the links to these great little uh, little features and films that we uh, try to promote. Absolutely. Oop, sorry. And uh, that's all I've got, Josh. So if you want to go ahead and play us out, uh, everyone, it's been a great show. It's been a great week, uh, to an, well, all things considered. Um <laughs> and uh, I have been show. your very humble and more toned back co-host, Brandon. Okay, I'm having everybody cheer for you as we uh, as we head out. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening tonight. As always, it's our pleasure to be able to talk to you and try to get you motivated to do, to do that thing that you want to do because the only thing stopping you is you if you want to make art then the only thing to do is to do it so until next week that's Brandon, I'm Josh this has been the Wadcast 